Uh, once you have your research question ready, then you need to know more about the topic by studying the previous research in the area, and this is where you need to do your literature review. So it is very important that you review enough literature relevant to your research question to better understand the context from which your research hypothesis arises because scientific progress is made by an accumulation of previous knowledge, which is a collection of related hypotheses answered by past research. In addition, literature review will help you identify the most up to date information and the current state of affair in the field, topic, or theme of your research. Literature review will also help you find the gaps in the field that have not been fully investigated or need more research. And finally, a successful literature review will help you refine or redefine your research hypothesis and the scope of your research. Before you review literature, obviously you need to first search and collect as many relevant literature as much as possible and save them in some safe place. In old days, you would need to go to library, but these days, literature search cannot be easier than ever thanks to the internet. You can start your search with major bibliography databases. A bibliographic database is a specialized digital collection of references to published literature, such as uh, journal articles or books. For vision sciences, probably PubMed will be the most relevant database to use, which is a database primarily dedicated to life sciences or biomedical topics. You know Google is always your best friend for any search, so you can use Google for the same purpose of literature search, but they have a bit more specialized search engine called Google Scholar for literature search. Finally, another way to do a literature search is to use one of the citation indices. In fact, citation index is another type of a bibliographic database, which is an index of citation between publication. This becomes particularly useful when you have a seminal paper or very important paper from the past that you think is the foundation of your research. Because it is quite common to start a new research based on the old research, citation index will be helpful to find out what has been done since the publication of the old paper to learn more about the current state of the affair or gap in the research area. GCU has a license with Web of Science, so you can use this citation index for free to do a literature search. And you will have a chance to learn how to use these database, uh, databases for your project or dissertation in much more detail in your fourth year. If you're doing your literature search for a study and planning to write an academic paper later, you must, I will say this again, you must use one of the reference management software, which is a specially de developed program for authors to easily manage collected literature for publication. I cannot emphasize enough how useful it can be once you get to um, use it. So this is a, you know, basically the lifesaver. Um, they're basically integrated with word processing software such as Microsoft Word. Um, they can populate formatted bibliographies, reference pages, or inline citations to any preferred style or recommended style such as Harvard or uh, APA style with a few button clicks. You will have a chance to learn more about you know how to use one of these software in your fourth year and make sure that you attend the session to learn how to use them. GCU has license with RefWorks um, in the middle. 
right? So um, you will get to learn how to work with WebForks uh, in that session. But if you don't um, like it for whatever reasons, there are tens of, if not hundreds, other reference managers out there. And I can recommend either Zotero on the left or Mendeley because they are free, easy to use, and pretty much platform independent. So once you finish collecting the relevant literature, then you need to review them individually because not all the collected literature will be directly relevant to your research question and you're not going to be including all of them in the reference section. Therefore, you want to quickly exclude literature by reading the title and abstract first, then sift further to pick out the most relevant literature to read in full. So when I was a student, actually, I found this step uh, most demanding and time consuming as the uh, journal articles or the scientific paper are usually very difficult to read to begin with. Um, moreover, reading a research paper is different from reading a textbook. You do not read it to find direct answer or crystal clear evidence to your question. And if you do, then why would you do your own research when you already found the answer from reading, right? And when you read a full paper, uh, you first try to understand the research question of the paper and read closely how they arrive their answers from the question. So the very first thing you want to do is to identify the hypothesis if there is one. And if not, try to identify at least the goal, aim, or purpose. So basically, you need to um, identify why they're doing what they're doing. And whenever possible, um, rephrase the question in your own words to clarify what you think they're doing is what they're actually doing as you read along. And for literature review, um, you need to be intentionally judgmental throughout, to, uh, throughout the, uh, the, uh, the process to find out if the entire uh, Q&A process, so basically that is Q&A process, um, is sound and logical and to select quality evidence related to your research. So you have to be willing to wonder constantly and keep asking yourself questions and stay skeptical, um, asking you know, questions like, you know, are the evidence or data um, good enough to support or refute the original study question? Or you can ask questions like, you know, if the methodology is valid to answer the research question or you know, whether or not the rationale leading to the claim or conclusion um, is logical and reasonable. Um, is there any oversimplification or sweeping generalization in their conclusion? And while you're reviewing this literature, you also want to watch out for hidden assumptions and biases. And whenever possible, consider other viewpoints or alternative interpretation. And finally, um, be willing to tolerate uncertainty. And this is unavo unavoidable, right? Because, you know, the journal articles are very difficult to read to begin with. And also, um, you're going to uh, come across a lot of difficult terms. Uh, uh, words, paragraphs you probably don't understand, but you do not want to get stuck forever. So you want to uh, you you, you want to be ready to settle for tentative answers until you find further evidence or understand, and then you would just move on. 